What's up everyone, Karu here from My Tennis HQ. Hope you guys are doing great. Uh, it's been a while, uh, life has been very busy. Haven't been able to be get in front of the camera as much as I wanted, but I had some time today. I wanna talk about the new Medvedev. What a guy. Uh, had an unbelievable couple weeks, uh, especially this last one beating pretty much everyone along the way. Number one, number two, number three in the world. Um, and this guy is just, he's just a genius uh, the way he plays uh, plays uh, the way he's he's been able to extract everything he can from his game uh, without again following that typical tennis player needs to play a certain way uh, just has figured out a way to maximize the way he his strokes and the output on everything that he does and I think it's just impressive to see. It's funny because back when he was coming up as like a next gen guy, I just couldn't really understand his game. And you know, it's obviously, I mean, at least in my opinion, not very aesthetically pleasing to watch just his, his strokes. They're not, they're not pretty, but you know, they work. And I, I remember getting into a, like a Twitter fight or something with someone that it was just like calling me out on it. I was like, look, I'm not saying the guy's bad. I'm just saying like his strokes are like really weird, but it doesn't mean the guy is a bad player. And, and I think that's what, that is gonna be somewhat of the lesson of this video as I, I analyze this game. Um, I want you as an amateur to think about some of those, those aspects of instead of like looking for perfection, looking to develop your own style, develop your own way of playing on the court. And again, this guy just with his style of game just keeps on crushing everyone, finding ways to beat different players of different styles all the time and you know props to him so let's just jump right into this game analysis and before we begin if you're not subscribed yet please subscribe it really helps the channel uh, we've been growing a lot and we want to keep pushing out more and more content uh, so we really appreciate it if you can subscribe it also visit my tennishq.com follow us on social media and again let's just run, jump right to this game analysis okay so the new medvedev the game style what a quirky tennis player, right? It's just everything is so different, so un unorthodox. And I think that's how he has found success uh, by playing his own way, by figuring it out how to make his opponents to be miserable on the other side of the court by playing the style that he wants to play. Since last year when he like really broke through and started winning a lot of tournaments, made the final via the US Open, was winning, I don't know how many matches he won on that stretch, but I've been very curious about his game um, again even though it isn't necessarily the sort of style that like I love watching but you just want to see how a player can you know solve problems on the court I think he's an amazing problem solver so at the US Open I made sure to go watch him in person to go watch him live uh, he actually played one of my buddies Marcos so I, I went out to watch that and the first thing that I noticed and I will break down more like his strokes and all that later in the video but just overall his game style the first thing i noticed was that he controls the tempo of the match really well he is the one who is in charge of like okay i'm gonna be a little more defensive now but i'm going to be defensive because i want to be defensive i will pull back a little bit um and just make balls on the court and then all of a sudden next point boom he just attacks you and you're you're on you're on the one on defense now and it's like what is happening like am i going you're never playing like okay i'm stepping on the court let's say you're playing feather you know you're probably going to be on defense a lot like fed is going to take charge and you're going to be the one on defense and you're probably going to be in that situation more often where with with medvedev it seems like he's just kind of like playing this ken mouse game with the players like oh, i'm gonna attack you now i'm gonna play like a little bit softer i'm gonna play everything through the mid middle and then you're gonna lift one ball up and i'm just gonna whack it like and he obviously has the power for it and you're just always in this constant like, am I like in control of the match? Am I, because it seems like you're not doing anything and I'm kind of comfortable hitting the ball, but like you're getting to everything, you're, you're creating uh, the, the right angles. And so he, he's really tricky that way. He's controlling the tempo of the match. He, he will go out and serve like four bombs. He will serve two first serves. And you're just like, you're always wondering what is he gonna do next? And that's like a, a really, really good lesson that you as an amateur should be thinking. It's like, don't think so black and white. It's like, I need to hit this ball. I need to hit this top spin. I need to create lag on my forehand. All this sort of BS that you see online that is like, you think is gonna make you better, but you, 
you actually need to be playing like your game. How do I figure out this game, right? It, it, tennis is a game. You need to see as a game. And Medvedev plays the game so perfectly, obviously to to his own credit, he's incredibly talented. He has, you know, has tremendous skills, physical skills, all, the, all those things. But he has figured out a way to play tennis in a way that makes everyone uncomfortable. And if you're just playing a way that, you know, someone tells you to do and you don't make the other, pe other players uncomfortable, then it's just not a great way to play. So that is, a, it is unbelievable to watch, especially in person, how he can do that. He's far away, far back for returning. And then all of a sudden, the next one, he's like close and he just takes it, takes it to you like on, with like a big shot. So he just controls everything that is happening in the match really well. Um, and I think that's, that's probably his best asset. You know, obviously his strokes are great, but, you know, that sort of like tennis IQ that he has uh, is really hard to find. And I think, you know, when you combine with his physical abilities and his talent, you know, with the racket, uh, it just makes him an incredibly difficult tennis player to play against. Okay, so moving to the more technical part. Let's talk about his strokes first, then I'm, I want to talk a little bit more about the tactics afterwards. But um, starting with the serve, his technique on the serve um, is good. Uh, I think the one thing he does really well on the first serve is that because his toss is, is a little bit more to the right, um, always, it's always a little more to the right of his head. Um, and he can, from that toss, hit the white, hit, hit the tee, hit the body. It makes it really difficult for people to read it. I, I, I mean, we've seen Novak struggling uh, returning his serve. And if Novak's not reading your serve, no one really is. So uh, that, I think that's the best part of his serve. He obviously has a lot, a lot of power. Uh, he's super precise. But he, again, it, it kind of always falls back into that cat and mouse game that he plays with the, with people he's like okay i'm gonna toss it here you think you're gonna think i'm gonna go wide i'm gonna go heavy t um i'm gonna toss it in the same spot you're gonna think i'm gonna go t i'm gonna go wide so he's always like making you guess and it, you know it's kind of like the underlying trend of his game but on his serve especially um on the first serve he's really able to hit the spots from one toss which is uh something not many people can do and and when you can do that, it's much better than just hitting hard. So serve is very good. I think his second serve could be a little bigger, like the kick. Um, I think he, it isn't the most powerful one. But again, he goes for a lot of first serves on the second serve too. He's very brave with that. So I can't really say that you know I see too many faults. And I think obviously with time, uh, he's probably going to improve his second serve a little bit more. Um, he, I think he uses the slice a lot on, on the second serve as well, so he kind of pulls you out wide on the deuce side. So just overall his serve um, is difficult to read, it's powerful, it's precise, and he's obviously getting a lot of free points from there. So um, it, it is a little bit of the stepping stone to his game. Then moving to his ground strokes, again he has very unusual technique, like especially on the forehand side, it, it is in play with a lot of different spins, and he can do that on the backhand as well. But on the forehand, you see he can play a little bit heavy, then he can like kind of like, almost like side spin one. He can keep the ball low, um, so he, he, nothing is ever uh, the same. It's always making you hit a different ball, and I think that makes people very uncomfortable. Um, he can, he's, I think he's obviously getting better, like taking that that ball, uh, that forehand a little bit on the rise and like really driving um, and. Over, I don't think he is the best at like generating easy power, kind of like Team or even Rafa Stan, uh, especially if he's from far back. But when he is far back, he he gets a lot of length. He gets a lot of depth on his shots, and he makes people not only just have to kind of come up with some, maybe almost force it a little bit. Uh, the issue, um, his ball also stays very low. So you know, from the ground strokes, from the back and corner and, and forehand corner. He's able to create a lot of length, and when you're creating that much length, um, it's hard for players to to hit winners, even if the ball isn't necessarily as powerful. And that's what I saw again watching him live. I was like, "Well, he's not hitting the ball that big." Like, and you know, I remember Marcos just pressing, making some errors, and almost like falling into like his bait. So like, he hits a couple deep, and then hits one short, and then you come in, and he passes you. So he he does that really well from the back where. Um, he 
again, keeps controlling the tempo, keeps hitting balls in different shapes, different spins, but always with a lot of length. And then you're the one forcing the issue. You're the one trying to create the angle sometimes when you don't have it. And it just makes it really, really hard to play tennis that way because he obviously moves well around the court, which I'll talk a little bit about in a second. And so, you know, forehand and backhand, don't really necessarily know which one is like his weapon is the one that you want to avoid i think he, he can be a little more erratic on the forehand side but um, just from the baseline he's just able to to create so much variation and and he understands the court really well which helps him just build the points the way he wants them to be built um, so just oh, again always fall, falling back into that he's the one creating and he's like an engineer on the court like creating the right spaces opening the, the right angles um, and it's really really impressive to see especially from someone who has a technique that is not conventional it's not something that like we're used to teaching or learning or anything so um, you know props to him and his team to for making him uh, for, for adjusting to his game style and, you know, extracting everything that they can from it. Now, it goes without saying that he's a great mover. Uh, obviously, he can chase a lot of balls down and he has, um, you know, the hand skills to come up with great shots from difficult positions on the court. Uh, but you need to pay attention to not just how fast he is and how he can get to certain balls, but how uh, he's moving around the court, how he's going back backwards and how he's going forward um i think he gets a lot of heat for returning from so far back but again as i watch him alive i was like why isn't everyone doing this why are we so close to the baseline take our own time away to return certain serves that we don't we're just making our life harder he's back there he obviously reads the serve he's moving according he's not just stiff back there um and he, you know, he, he's very lengthy, so he can get to a lot of those shots. So obviously makes it a little bit easier to be so far back. But just in general, he will hit that first return and you see him quickly actually get back, get close to the baseline. And obviously if he doesn't hit a good return, he will, he will stand a little further back. So he's able to, on the second or third shot, neutralize the point. So he goes from defense to neutral to offense and back a lot during the points. He's always like moving forward, moving back, or moving forward. So he immediately as he hits the ball, he understands that like, mm, probably didn't hit a good ball. I'm gonna pull back a little bit, um, use my length and my skill to like get to those shots and hit them deep. And on the other hand, if he hits, you know, good balls, um, he will get a little closer to the baseline. So it's it's almost, almost like, it's very tactical the way he, he moves around the court. So yes. Tremendous mover, uh, especially for a, a guy uh, of his height um, and being so lengthy. So I think we're getting that more and more in tennis now, guys that are 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", 6'6", moving around the court like they're, you know, 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, and when you have those sorts of skills that he has to keep the ball um, deep and keep the ball low um, and moving around the court that way, it becomes really tricky to play. So again, just great move around the court and just a nightmare to play against. And finally, let's talk a little bit about his tactics. Um, as I said before, I think he's unbelievable at making people uncomfortable. Uh, one thing I see with his game is that he understands the court in like a very like geometrical way. He, he knows when he can create the angles and when he sh you know shouldn't be creating the angles uh, for the other players. So his life is actually easier um, when he's moving you, you see that like sometimes you want to play a certain shot but that shot might give your op your opponent an opportunity to attack you or to put you in a difficult situation and I think he understands that really well he's always making the right decision on where to place the ball so not only uh, when he will be opening the court or creating angles but how he will not allow the opponent to create those angles by hitting balls that are deep that are through the middle that are low that you're at that point having to force something if you're trying to go for an angle if you're trying to go for a shot that uh, is a little bit more aggressive so he just understands uh, the court and the game really well and not only that he understands himself really well probably the things that he knows he can do a little bit better job 
the things that he knows uh, he's very good at. So again, it kind of goes back into that, you know, controlling the tempo, um, you know, making things uncomfortable all the time. One thing I, I saw it a lot uh, in the ATP finals is that he's actually making a more conscious effort to get to the net. He, again, returns a little, a lot far back and all of a sudden you hit a second serve, he was on top of the baseline hitting and coming in and put, putting in that pressure. He's also serving in volley on some second serves. I saw, I saw that a lot. So he's making an effort actually to not make you think that you can just like, okay, he's going to be far back. I'm just going to like, you know, I'm able to at least start the point. He's at adding that doubt in your head. And I think that's a key factor on his game that he's constantly making you question your decision. It's like, did I just miss that because it wasn't the right shot? Or uh, did I just miss that because um, he did better than me? Was Am I just playing bad? Is he making me play bad? I think he's always making you question what's going on on the court. And that's a really, really tough thing to teach. And not, it's not, people don't really, you know, aren't really wired that way um, for the most, most of the time. So he has this unbelievable talent besides his technical skill, besides his, his uh, physical skills to just make the right decisions and then execute them. Obviously, like you, you can be a person who can make the right decisions but not be able to execute it. And he does it in a very unusual ways. He, he's going for shots that players aren't necessarily um, thinking that he should be going because like that's not how, you know, when you're the opponent, like you see a certain ball, it's like they're probably going to go there if they cross. If they go line, you're like, what? like that wasn't the right decision. But for Daniil, he obviously has like this wide array of shots that he can like experiment through the through the match and just always keep you guessing it's like you can't just necessarily hit a ball and it's like okay the most likely scenario is that he will be hitting here i can anticipate that he's always like kind of making you guess and the final thing i think is just incredibly courageous he, he just does not shy away from the moment he you know goes for two first serves if he needs to in, in tough situations um he will play more aggressive if he needs to finish the point and he he knows he he has an opportunity that he might not see again so he he's very brave on the court and i think that's you know when you couple that to to you know his ability to to make you uncomfortable and in just the way he plays tennis uh it makes it really difficult to play and the last thing i want to talk about is what can you as an amateur and even myself can learn uh from the news game i think he has found a way in a very unusual style to be very successful in tennis and he has a very strong tennis identity um, he plays the way he wa he wants to play he has learned how to maximize that game style that he has and he's not necessarily trying to be anyone that he's not and I, that's what i think a lot of amateurs have a problem with their training they're trying to be someone that they're not they're either trying to i'm going to add too much topspin to my game or i'm going to add i'm going to try to hit flatter i'm going to do all these things that uh, might not fit your personality your tennis identity so you worry too much about your ground strokes your topspin your power whatever but you haven't really developed a game style and you know for people who have played in a higher level like myself we develop a style like i have for many many years worked on my forehand worked on my serve uh, but i will always play uh t in a way that almost like favors my back and it's just always going to be like that it's uh, you know i like to play flat i'm never going to play with like too much topspin and i think you know what medvedev has done is that but in on steroids he has created his style he's unconventional he's hard to play against and he, he's almost like that guy that you play <laughs> like in a very amateur level is that guy that like you you've play you've played and you just don't know how you lost you're like I, you just feel like you're better than them but he just, they're able to navigate the match better than you um so you as an amateur should be aiming at developing that, deve developing your identities like hey am i do i have just a good slice that i can use in a in a very almost offensive way why don't i use that more why am i trying to hit over the, the ball all the time you gotta think about tennis you know as a game um yes we 
when we're practicing, we want to develop our strokes and want to feel good. But when you're playing the game, you need to play to your strengths. When you're when you're playing a match, uh, it really comes down to like who navigates the match better, who can play the game better. And I think Medvedev does that so beautifully, so beautifully, where he again sees the see he has a high tennis IQ, so he sees the court really well. You know when he can open angles, when he should be playing down the middle, when he needs to be aggressive, when he needs to pull back. He navigates not only the court but the the, the scoreboard. When he's going to add pressure, when it's time to like pull back a little bit, all those things is navigating all the time. And you, as a player, should be aiming at doing that, and not necessarily just like, oh, I can hit like twelve forehands in a row cross courts. Yes, there's obviously different levels, but if you're if you're someone who's already competing and trying to like, you know, whatever, be your club champion, be whatever. Um, you should be developing that sort of mentality that like I am my own player uh, and I don't need yes you're gonna learn from other players you're gonna learn from coaches but you need to develop you know yourself and understanding yourself as a player and um, and again it goes you you think about the news technique isn't necessarily you know the one that you would be teaching little kids right you probably wouldn't be looking at, at Medvedev's strokes for it um, but he's, you know, swings his swing. It's like a famous thing that we say in golf. Instead of like trying to swing, swing like Rory McIlroy, just swing your swing. Whatever makes it work, whatever your brain makes it work so that ball flies, you know, 250, 300 yards straight, there's the same in tennis. You need to figure out how your brain can make sense of all these shots. How my brain can make sense of hitting topspin. How my brain can make sense of hitting a flatter shot or a drop shot or a slice. And I think that's the the message that I want you to take from this video, not only, you know, the analyzing Medvedev's game, but like trying to incorporate some of his philosophy to yours. I think uh, you can learn a lot from a player like him. I certainly do. Um, and, you know, strive to be your own player. So there you have it. This is my game analysis for the new Medvedev. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit, lit, hit the like button. It really helps us. Also, if you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel. Really, really appreciate that. Uh, we've been growing a lot and we're pumped to keep pushing out content for you guys. Uh, we're working on some pretty cool stuff, so stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next one.